When I was a kid, I always wanted to shrink down and be tiny. But now that I've played grounded, it's gonna be a hard pass. For what it's worth, it's a good enough replacement for backyard camping since we don't actually have a backyard. But all the creepy crawlies have me thinking twice about taking a trip to go lay under the stars anytime soon. I wouldn't say I have a phobia for insects, but I think I've developed one for being tiny. But I guess that's just part of the fun on grounded date night. Or as we like to call it, honey, I shrunk the girlfriend. <laughs> Seeing the world from this perspective is pretty wild. Aside from the obvious stuff like seeing all the different insects up close and personal, it's fun interacting with other everyday things but being tiny. I loved when I found a massive Oreo cookie and just started hacking away at it like it was some kind of delicious ore node. The game has plenty of moments like that that make you stop and think, wow, this is really neat. On the other hand, it has things that are completely horrifying and make us feel even smaller than an ant. Okay, here's what's gonna happen. Can we like sprint to the right? We're gonna go right, yeah. Okay. okay. And go. Go, go, go! Ah! Speaking of becoming ants, this game takes us into a weird headspace. Like the other day, we completely dropped the main mission objectives and just sort of went into a blind frenzy of chopping blades of grass while arguing about whether it'd be scary or if all the humans shrunk down this small or if all bugs grew to be giant. Getting shrunk down to the size of an ant has its perks. Please tell me we fit through here. No. For one thing, only a droplet of water is needed to fill up on thirst. It's not so much finding enough food and water for survival as it is remembering we need them to survive in the first place. We're both really good at getting so preoccupied with whatever we're working on that we completely gloss over thirst and hunger. Drink or die. Oh shit, I just noticed that on my screen. Oh my god, I'm dying too. When it comes to actual survival in the backyard, I consider myself lucky to have ended up with a boy scout for a boyfriend. I'm gonna go for it, Taryn. I don't know if I can- oh wait, I can just walked down. Never mind. <laughs> I was gonna jump. <laughs> I can leave all the logistics to him and not break a sweat over it. It goes like this in every survival game we play, and I'm starting to wonder if I'll ever get better about it. I'll be running around and playing with dandelions and naming gnats, and then it will just hit me that we've been playing for two hours, and he's built pretty much everything you see at our little base camp, while the only thing I've done is chop grass and run away from ants. Wait, where'd that other one go? Oh my god. Hello there! Hello, Nat! Is this my pet now? It's difficult for us not to constantly compare this game to the forest. Carrying around leaf planks is reminiscent enough of our time playing the forest that we both end up wanting to call this game The Lawn. If you ask me to pick between ants or cannibals, I'd rather not choose at all. Hello, ants. Just looking at me? You sizing me up? Get the hell out of here. But one thing that hasn't changed is my boyfriend is still carrying everything around for us. Oh, I thought it was around the corner. But I guess not. It seems like just when we're starting to feel comfortable with our surroundings, we get attacked by something new and all hell breaks loose. Acorn shell. <gasps> oh my god, Nick, 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 Nick. Run, <gasps> run, run, <gasps> run. <gasps> Nothing quite like getting pounced on by a wolf spider and then beginning the long and arduous process of running to our backpacks over and over until he decides to leave us alone. It's shit like this that makes me feel no remorse about swatting bugs when they're in the house. Go around the camp. There's two! There's two! There's two! There's two! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh god, I got 20 seconds. Oh, we're done. Nocturnal my ass. At least I have the decency to kill them quick, unlike the ones in the game that like toying with us instead. Yeah, I went hunting once. Shot the deer in the leg. Had to kill it with a shovel, took about an hour. He doesn't like to stand in front of me when we're killing bugs for the same reason he doesn't let me hold a fly swatter in real life. He always ends up getting hit right in the face. What are you doing, Marv? I when we both started out, we didn't know that friendly fire was a thing. But when playing with me, it never takes long to figure out. We actually realized at some point that it was a setting you could disable, but by that time, we'd adjusted to me being the apex predator of the garden and we're in too deep to pull out. Can you try hitting me real quick? Okay. Okay, yeah, you can hurt me. So, so I killed you. You definitely were lighting me up. The story was what pushed us forwards and grounded. It's intimidating to leave the starting area with all the creepy crawlies out in the brush, but damn it, I want some answers. Like, where's this scientist? Did he shrink too? Whose backyard is this? There's an infinite number of girlfriend distractions between the building and being afraid of the pest, so it's nice to have my boyfriend always bugging me about exploring the yard and progressing the plot. What the hell is that? <laughs> I don't know, but it didn't jump. 
No, not that, Taryn. That giant mother. <gasps> There's two of them. Oh my god. Right, let's bail. When it comes to gathering resources, I'm your go-to girl. Whatever the powers that be are, they made me accidentally amazing at collecting random shit. While it's horrible for inventory management, it's great for crafting new things. It seems like whenever he needs something, I just happen to already have some of it lying around in my pocket. Just don't ask me where I got it because I don't have a clue. Okay, so where did you find that wax? I don't know. Things have become kind of a grind when we're working on some really big project, because all I do is run back and forth chopping grass and weeds. I get that this is a survival game, but I'm getting sick of running around role-playing small bunion. Every time I'm feeling sure that we've gotten enough materials, he and I end up coming up short and have to go back out again. Surely we can cut costs somewhere, right? But every time I ask him what we need it all for, I get the same answer. That's why. So we don't get ants. There's a pink resource to collect out in the world called raw science. I only know that's what it's called because every time we pick it up, the game lets us know with a radical s -s 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 science. Like a moth to the light, I gravitate towards both shiny and pink. So if my boyfriend loses me, chances are it's because I found some science to go after. Science. I just found science in the water. I can smell colors. Exploring is probably our favorite part of the game. It's just too fun looking around at all the things to find in the yard, which by the way, is a total sty and needs some serious cleanup. We just wanted to get up as high as possible to find a good vantage point and see what all there is to find. What the hell is this? Is this like a lobster? Then it'd be about picking a landmark and heading towards it and hoping we don't die along the way. Yo, what the hell? Head. He's a lot quicker than I am, so it's pretty common for me to lose him and get left behind. I admit to being navigationally challenged, but when we see a spider cutting through the grass, fight or flight takes over and we both just beeline it in opposite directions. All right, let's get the cookie. My cookie. No, we need a better hammer than this cookie. Nick, Nick, Nick. Oh, Nick, shit. Nick. Go, 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 okay. go, 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 go. I got webbed. You're webbed? Help. <laughs> oh my I don't know God. what to do. It's one of those types of situations where I think he's right behind me and he thinks I'm right behind him. It's just not fair how I end up surrounded by stink bugs and he ends up on top of a giant cookie. Oh my God. This was not a good idea. Oh, I found another Oreo. Grounded does a great job reminding me why I hate certain bugs in real life. Nothing chills me to my core like the incessant buzzing of a mosquito, because if it's an earshot, chances are it's close enough to bite us. It doesn't help that the game kicks up the soundtrack and starts playing like we're in a high-speed chase every time a bug gets aggressive. I'll stick to petting the cute ones and riding on ladybugs. Hey, look at this. Oh my gosh, you're riding the ladybug. <laughs> I didn't think I was arachnophobic, but having played Grounded, I think I may want to revise that claim. What's going on in here? Oh, I don't like this. I didn't turn the arachnid setting down. <gasps> Are you talking to me? Maybe oh. we could just sneak I, past them. I, I meant oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Right. Those are not friendlies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know damn well that turning down the arachnid slider would be something he never let me forget about, so I just tough it out. Ironically, I find the scariest thing about them to be their glowing red eyes, and that's the only thing that can't be removed using the slider. So even if it's a giant floating marshmallow with no legs, the red eyes still stare deep into my soul. Oh shit, that's a spider. <laughs> that's what he looks like? That's somehow scarier than the actual. That's so funny. I always have them release the spiders outside when we find one in the house, but this game is giving me plenty of reasons to not think twice about crushing them with a flip flop. Ow!